From weird gorilla-horse hybrids to the biggest cats to ever live, here are some of the most unbelievable prehistoric creatures that actually existed. Let me know which one's your favorite. Simba How much do you think an average house cat weighs? Spoiler alert, it's not a lot. It's definitely not more than a ton, which is how much an ancient cat just discovered in a museum weighed. This previously unknown feline foe was bigger than a tiger. It was bigger than a lion. It was even bigger than a polar bear. It may have been the most unstoppable cat in the history of the planet. Scientists say its skull was about the size of the skull of a rhinoceros, yet it was as nimble as your average cat. This cat was so impressive that scientists needed a good name for it. They opted to call it Simba Kubwa Kutokafrika, clearly inspired by the Lion King. But unlike most awesome discoveries, the cat wasn't found in the field. It had been previously excavated somewhere in Kenya and stashed in a random drawer at the National Museum of Kenya. Researchers Nancy Stevens and Matthew Borths only had to open the drawer to make the discovery. I asked you earlier how much an average house cat weighs, but I didn't give you an answer. Now, I want to break down some cat weights so you can truly understand how biblically enormous the prehistoric Simba was. Your average house cat weighs something like 8 pounds. A snow leopard can weigh up to 110 pounds. The mountain lions that stalk North America grow to a maximum of 175 pounds. Your average lion is only about 400 pounds, while the biggest tiger on record weighed an astounding 715 pounds. Tigers are the biggest and most dangerous of all the big cats. All these animals pale in comparison to Simba, who weighed roughly 2,888 pounds. That is three times heavier than the biggest tiger on record. Comparing it to an average lion is laughable. It was seven times heftier than the typical lion you see on an African safari. For a time, these big cats were the apex predators in Africa. They belonged to a larger mammal family called hyenodonts. After the dinosaurs went extinct, hyenodonts took charge of Africa as the most ferocious creatures around. For 45 million years, they dominated the continent. There is a very high possibility that while Simba Kubwa was alive, herbivore species were unable to get a foothold. Early primates and plant-eating mammals would not have had much room to evolve because they were constantly eaten. But then, about 18 million years ago, hyenodonts suddenly went extinct for unknown reasons. Probably because they ate everything. It was only when these huge cats were out of the picture that monkeys started to make huge strides in evolution. This ultimately led to human beings. Human progress was literally stunted because there were giant cats running around. And now for number 7. But first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a big thank you to Sienna and Heather! I'm so glad you're able to watch the channel together. Hopefully it's not too scary. And also a big thank you to Susie Milford for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. The Gorilla Horse There used to be a creature that lived on this planet and can only be described as a hybrid gorilla horse. Or maybe it was more like a hybrid horse gorilla. I guess it's all a matter of perspective. Either way, this hoofed monstrosity was a beast. Its face was distinctively horse-like. It had a bulging belly. It also had arms significantly longer than its legs, allowing it to amble around on its fists just like a modern gorilla. It sounds like a creature straight out of Greek mythology, but was a very real animal known as a chelokithere. These creatures were part of a group of perissodactyls. The word sounds like pterodactyls, but the two weren't even remotely close. Pterodactyls were flying reptiles, and perissodactyls are all the animals related to horses and rhinoceroses. The gorilla horse evolved at around the same time as the ancestors of modern horses. They would have come into the picture around 46 million years ago. Then, before long, they had branched into two separate groups. One lived in the grasslands while the other meandered through the ancient forests. They also spread across the entire planet, appearing everywhere from North America to Asia. Even weirder is that Chalicothir had a feeding habit much more similar to modern pandas than either a horse or a gorilla. They used their long arms and claws to strip vegetation off long branches. 
Their claws were so big that they had to walk on their knuckles. Chilicotheres resembled horses, mostly in color and physical appearance, but they wandered around with the gait of a gorilla and feasted on trees like panda bears. Oh yeah, and don't forget, Chilicotheer also had a sloping back, similar to that of the giraffe. It's a wonder these things didn't survive into modern times, given they had so many distinctive animal traits. Researchers think the very last of their kind disappeared from China just 8,000 years ago. The Tree Climbing Crocodile I'm going to tell you something about crocodiles that you might not know and that you might not want to know. Brace yourselves! Modern crocodiles can climb trees. It's a phenomenon that has been very well documented. Not only can crocodiles attack you from the water, but they can also get you from a tree canopy when you think you're safe. It's a little-known fact that makes the ancient reptiles so much more frightening. The reason I'm telling you this is because I want to introduce you to an extinct prehistoric crocodile from Australia that had a knack for tree climbing. It's called Trilophosuchus rakami. It lived between 23 and 5 million years ago. But unlike modern crocodiles in Australia, this thing was tiny. It was a dwarf species of crocodile, hardly taller than a person's ankle. It had a short snout, distinctive ridges on the top of its skull, and it may have spent a lot of time in the trees. Scientists have suggested it was arboreal, meaning it liked to lounge on tree branches, like an iguana. It's only a theory, so I can't tell you for sure that the tiny crocodile lived in trees. What I can say is that it was, without a doubt, one of the cutest crocodiles that ever evolved. Associate Professor Steve Salisbury from Australia said if you were to travel back in time, 13 million years, there would be ferocious crocodiles at the edge of the water. Crocodiles that could definitely eat you. But you'd also have to watch yourself in the forest because you might accidentally step on the tiny Trilophosuchus. This thing was more like an adorable lizard than a crocodile, but still not very fun if it lands on your head. The Giant Terror Bird People spend a lot of time worrying about sharks and bears, but birds are the far more fearsome predators. Humans don't have to worry about being attacked by giant birds these days, unless they live somewhere near cassowaries or ostriches or magpies. But 50 million years ago, the world was dominated by birds. And until very recently, terror birds were a serious threat to humanity. Terror birds included all large flightless birds that hunted across the globe. The scientific name for these horrible creatures was Phorosracids. Out of all the demonic feathered predators that lived, the biggest demon of them all was Kelenken Guillermoi. Kelenken lived 15 million years ago. This feathered monstrosity was the epitome of almost 40 million years of terror bird evolution. Most of its fossils have been found in South America, but the first identified in 2007. In the last decade, scientists have been hard at work recreating what this awful creature looked like. It was not a pretty animal. Kellen Ken towered over an average human being. It grew over 10 feet tall. You would have had to crane your neck all the way back just to look up at the bottom of this thing's beak. As it stared back down at you with its beady bird eyes, its beak, which may as well have been of solid steel, was about the size of an average human torso. Its beak was extra strong because it was fused to its skull. Kellen can use it to beat things into submission. In all likelihood, the bird's beak was so deadly that a single blow would knock out any potential prey. The beak also kept the bird free from predators since nobody wanted to be on the receiving end of it, not even Smilodon aka the saber-toothed tiger. Uintetherium There is one word that has been used to describe Uintetherium almost universally, and that one word is ugly. I hate to say it, but Uintetherium was a seriously grotesque behemoth. It was also a preposterously large animal that lived 56 million years ago in the Eocene epoch. It was kind of like a rhino, except the size of an elephant and with three pairs of horns. It also had a face like a giant spoon. Fossils of this amazing animal were discovered in the Rocky Mountains in northeast Utah and southern Wyoming. It was a member of the Uintetheridae family, of which all of its members are currently extinct. There is not a single animal left alive today directly related to Uintetherium. But why does everybody call it ugly? Partly for its size, but mostly for what was going on with its face. The behemoth stood about 5.6 feet at the shoulders. It wasn't hugely tall, but very hefty. It was 13 feet long and weighed 4,000 pounds. Its legs were thick and sturdy to support 
support all of that weight. From a distance, it wouldn't have looked much different from a rhino, but its skull is where all its ugliness came from. Its skull was flat in a lot of places and dipped inwards. This was a feature almost never seen in other mammals. It also had really thick bones in its skull, which left little space for a brain to grow. Along with being horribly ugly, the poor creature had a tiny brain. It just couldn't catch a break. Obviously, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but scientists say its skull was really weird, giving its head an unusual shape. Then there were all the things that were sticking out from its head. Males had six things sticking out from their skulls. These were like tiny horns, but not at all actually horns. Modern giraffes have these two things on their heads too. They are bony structures covered over with skin as opposed to horns that are made of keratin, the same stuff that makes up your fingernails. So what do you think? Was this creature ugly? Let me know in the comments below. The Conca Venator In 2010, there was an entirely new dinosaur that everyone was talking about. It hasn't been in the news lately, so let me do my part by introducing those who haven't heard of it to Conca Venator. It was a humpbacked carnivore, like a miniature T-Rex, bred with a camel. It also had teeth, like a shark. The initial article over 10 years ago was published in the scientific journal Nature. Researchers claim the dinosaur lived during the early Cretaceous, meaning 130 million years before today. From the tip of its dinosaur nose to the end of its tail, the creature was about 13 feet long. Its name, Conca Venator, translates into English as the hunchback hunter from Cuenca. It was named for its unusual hump and for the fact that its fossils were discovered in central Spain. Scientists still don't know what its hump was for. They think maybe it was something to attract the ladies, a little flash of flamboyance to earn a mate, or it may have been used to store energy or keep the dinosaur cool in hot weather. Scientist Ed Yong said sometimes dinosaurs or body parts are so strange, their purpose remains a mystery. Weird Bats 2023 was a big year for bat lovers. Paleontologists uncovered bat skeletons from 52 million years ago. They are the oldest bat skeletons ever found. Scientists have always wondered how bats developed the ability to eco-locate. It is arguably the most remarkable trait in the animal kingdom. There are definitely a lot of different traits that could be considered the greatest. Some creatures can regenerate lost limbs, some creatures can fly, others can see in the dark. But the ability to eco-locate is something truly spectacular. The issue is that most most bat fossils that have been found are from creatures that had already developed the ability. Scientists don't know how it happened. There are no useful transitional skeletons, no missing links. The two newly discovered bat skeletons were found at the bottom of what was once a lake bed in Wyoming. Each one only weighed about as much as five tiny marbles. They were already able to fly and likely could use echolocation. Tim Wrightbergen, an evolutionary biologist from the Netherlands, said the bat likely lived in the trees around the lake and hunted insects. These new bats looked almost identical to modern bats. It's almost as if they didn't evolve at all over the past 52 million years. But there are a few subtleties. These bats had slightly thicker bones, suggesting they were evolving away from creatures that got around by climbing trees instead of flying. There is also a different species of ancient bat found in Wyoming years ago that had short wings. This other bat probably got around by climbing and fluttering instead of flying. It also probably hadn't figured out how to eco-locate yet. The whole bat conundrum is endlessly infuriating to scientists. For example, there are modern creatures known as flying foxes that are fruit-eating bats and do not have the ability to echolocate, yet they are still bats. Scientists don't know what gave some bats the ability for echolocation while others missed out. They don't know where the feature came from, nor do they know how bats became so successful. You might not know it, but bats are some of the most important animals in the world. There are over 1,400 species. One-fifth of all mammal species are bats. They live on every continent except Antarctica. The Fluffy Dinosaur 125 million years ago, there was a predatory monster that stalked the wilds of China. The predatory monster was covered in fuzz. Researchers don't think it was hairy, nor was it feathery. It was a fuzzy dinosaur, maybe even fluffy. Its name was Cynocalyopteryx, and it was roughly 8 feet long. It was a fantastically powerful predator with sharp teeth that looked fairly similar to the velociraptors from the original Jurassic Park movie. Only instead of having scaly lizard skin, they were covered in dino fuzz. It also had close relatives who were equally as fuzzy, like Cynoceropteryx. 
Being furry and maybe cute didn't mean being a weakling. A fossilized skeleton of Sinocalyopteryx was recently discovered in China with the leg bone of a dromaeosaurid in its preserved stomach. Dromaeosaurids were dinosaurs that had claws like sickles and have always been considered mega predators. The fact one of them wound up in the guts of a fuzzy dinosaur proves just how ferocious and formidable this dinosaur was. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Mysterious Sea Dragon Researchers in England have discovered an aquatic reptile that lived 150 million years ago. Found in a late Jurassic deep marine deposit in Dorset along the English Channel coastline, it was recently identified as a new species from the ichthyosaur group. Dubbed Thalassodraco et Kesi, the ancient sea monster is quite unique enough to warrant being classified as a new genus and species, according to a recently published study. Ichthyosaurus have been studied for the last 200 years in England, making discoveries of new species exceedingly rare. As soon as the team saw it, they knew it was special. Researchers spent about a year comparing the specimen to other ichthyosaurs and were excited when they did not match it to any of them. They determined that the small finned creature was about six feet long. It had an extremely deep rib cage, which likely gave it a barrel-like body, making room for large lungs. This means that it could probably dive very deep below the water's surface. The animal's large eyes may have helped it see in the dark, also suggesting that it was a deep diver, or perhaps nocturnal. Because of T. etkesi's distinctive body shape, it likely swam differently from other ichthyosaurs. It also had hundreds of tiny, smooth teeth that were ideal for eating squid and small fish, unlike other ichthyosaurs, which generally had large, sharp teeth. The next step is for scientists to further study the animal's biology to better understand its habits and behaviors. It was definitely doing something different. Ichthyosaurs started out as lizard-like land animals and eventually adapted to marine life and transitioned into the shark and dolphin-like creatures found in fossils. The largest known ichthyosaurs were found in North America and had skulls measuring up to 16 feet long. The Monkey Dactyl Researchers recently identified what may be the earliest known animal with opposable thumbs. It is a giant flying reptile with thumbs. Nicknamed the Monkey Dactyl and scientifically named Cunpengopterus antipolicatus, yeah, don't quote me on that. The 160 million year old fossilized pterosaur was discovered in the ancient Tiaojishan forest in China. It had a small body with an approximate wingspan of 33 and a half inches. Using 3D imaging and X-ray technology, an international team of researchers determined that the species' opposable thumbs likely made it well-suited for climbing and grasping objects and possibly enabled it to live high up in the trees. By comparing the specimen with other pterosaurs, the team concluded that the monkey dactyl had the right build for climbing. Because not all pterosaurs had opposable thumbs or could climb, these advantageous characteristics would have reduced competition for the monkey dactyl. See, you remember this name, don't you? What's the scientific name again? But not all experts necessarily agree with the findings. Speaking with Gizmodo, paleontologist Kevin Padian pointed out that having opposable thumbs is not a guaranteed indicator of a tree-dwelling species, citing the example that raccoons have this trait but don't always live in trees. Now scientists are on the lookout for a better preserved fossil to see just what Monkey Dactyl was up to. Godzilla Shark A 300 million year old fossil famously known as the Godzilla Shark finally has a scientific name nine years after it was discovered in New Mexico's Manzano Mountains. It has 12 rows of sharp teeth and two and a half foot tall fin spines. Measuring about 6.7 feet long, the creature is now formally called Dracopristis hoffmanorum or Hoffman's Dragon Shark, named after the family who owns the land it was discovered on. It might sound unusual for a shark to be discovered in the mountains of one of the country's driest regions, but sea levels were much higher back when the Godzilla shark existed, and what is now New Mexico was submerged beneath a seaway that extended into North America. Scientists believe the species dwelled in shallow coastal waters, feasting on crustaceans and fish. Its teeth were shorter than those of modern sharks, measuring roughly 0.8 inches or 2 centimeters long, and were better suited for grasping and crushing rather than piercing the animal's prey, in the words of John Paul Hodnett, who discovered the fossil as a graduate student in 2013. The specimen represents one of the most complete fossilized skeletons ever found among its evolutionary branch, 
which split from the modern shark lineage around 390 million years ago. It's believed that the Godzilla shark went extinct roughly 60 million years later. Ice Age Horse Workers who were recently hired to build a pool in Las Vegas were shocked to find a collection of bones buried about four or five feet deep on the property. Police were summoned to the scene, where they established that the bones weren't human, and told homeowner Matt Perkins that the artifacts were more or less his problem to deal with. Relieved that the bones weren't human, but curious about what animal they did belong to, Perkins had local paleontologist Joshua Bond of the Nevada Science Center take a look. Bond told CNN that the fossilized remains are a prehistoric horse dating back an estimated 14,000 years to the last ice age. Didn't expect that in Las Vegas, did you? Researchers will perform tests to determine its precise age and perhaps even its species. Its bones were still connected the way they were when the horse was alive, which he said is rare and indicates that its remains were buried quickly after its death, protecting the corpse from scavengers. The horse lived alongside extinct creatures like mammoths, camels, saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, and more. Ironically, Perkins and his husband had joked before the discovery about the possibility of the workers digging up a dinosaur. Not quite a dino, but still pretty cool. The couple put the pool's construction on hold so researchers could collect, study, and display the horse to the public. What would you do if you found bones in your backyard? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number six. But first, want to say a big thank you to Joe W. and Steven Toy. Hi guys, and hi kids. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the Origins Explained family. And let me know your favorite prehistoric creature in the comments below. Frog-Faced Ancient Turtle Between 72 and 66 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, an ancient turtle with a face like a frog sucked up its prey. It had no teeth, like all modern turtles, a flattened skull, and poorly developed upper and lower jaw. But it did have a large tongue bone, which made it a great suction feeder. It lived in what is now the island nation of Madagascar. As a suction feeder, it did not use its jaws to process food, but instead ate small-bodied living prey whole. Dubbed Sahonoculus melacavava, the prehistoric species is what paleontologist Dr. David Krauss called a stunning example of evolution in isolation. Krauss explained that the turtle evolved by itself on Madagascar for over 20 million years, like a multitude of other extinct species that have been discovered there. A fossilized specimen found in 2015 in northern Madagascar is, as Krauss put it, by far the best preserved late Cretaceous turtle among the southern continents. The team was actually looking for dinosaurs and crocodiles, but as an extra bonus, they found this turtle shell, almost entirely intact. In a place known for its unique wildlife due to its isolation from the rest of the planet, the fossil shows that animals that lived in Madagascar tens of millions of years ago were already very distinct from creatures in other parts of the world. At the same time, the discovery also sheds light on a phenomenon called convergent evolution when different animals independently evolve similar traits to adapt to their surroundings. Burrowing Mammal Ancestors Around 120 million years ago, two distantly related ancestors of modern-day mammals lived in what is now northeastern China. Recently identified as the earliest known scratch diggers in the ancient Jehol Biota ecosystem, these burrowing creatures independently evolved similar traits to support their lifestyle. They were mammal-like, but weren't quite mammals yet. A big question for scientists is why animals dig into the soil and live underground. There are many guesses like protection against predators and help maintaining a comfortable temperature. The new species lived sometime between 145 million and 100 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous. They were equipped with specialized traits for burrowing, including short limbs, a short tail, and strong forelimbs with well-developed hands. One is a tritilodontid, or a mammal-like lizard named Phosiomanus sinensis. Measuring about a foot long, it had an elongated spine made up of 38 vertebrae, 12 more than the 26 that typical modern mammals have. The other specimen, dubbed Juconodon kenai, is around 7 inches long and is a distant cousin of modern placental mammals and marsupials, known as a Eutriconodontin. It had 26 vertebrae, also making it longer than most mammals. Scientists believe that a genetic mutation that occurs during embryonic development is responsible for the animal's elongated spines. This is known to occur in some modern-day mammals, including elephants, manatees, and hyraxes. 
First nocturnal dinosaur Around 65 million years ago, in the deserts of what is now Mongolia, lived a strange genus of theropod dinosaurs called Shuvuya, hailing from the group that gave rise to modern-day birds. There is only one known Shuvuya species, Shuvuya deserti, which means desert bird. It was about half the size of a chicken, with long legs, a fragile skull, and powerful arms equipped with single claws. While the desert bird's existence is not a new discovery, researchers recently learned through a new study that it may have been the first dinosaur to hunt at night. That's a huge advantage. After one team member noticed that the Shuvuya's lagina, an organ that processes hearing, was unusually long, the scientists compared the species with CT scans of around 100 living birds and extinct dinosaurs. They also measured each species' scleral rings, which are the bones surrounding the pupils, to determine which animals were most likely to have operated in low light. Much to their surprise, the barn owl, a nocturnal species with exceptional hearing, was the only creature with a comparably long lagina to the Shuvuya. Additionally, the Shuvuya's scleral ring was large in diameter, meaning it let in a lot of light and perhaps suited the animal to hunting in the dark. The team believes that the creature's remarkable hearing helped it locate burrowing insects and small mammals, then seized its prey by digging with one of its two large, singular claws. These traits, including nocturnal activity, digging ability, and long hind limbs, are also seen in modern-day desert animals. Throughout the study, the team also learned that most dinosaurs were primarily daytime creatures, and that predatory dinosaurs typically had good hearing compared to most birds, while herbivorous dinosaurs usually had poor hearing compared to most birds. New Saber-Toothed Cat North America was once home to massive creatures that would seem wildly out of place today, including one of the largest cats that ever lived. The newly identified saber-toothed species roamed the continent between 9 and 5 million years ago, hunting rhinos and bison. Several years ago, a graduate student rediscovered the big cat's massive upper arm bone at the University of Oregon Museum of Natural and Cultural History, leaving experts perplexed about what species it belonged to. A years-long effort to solve the mystery ensued, culminating in a collection of seven previously uncategorized fossil specimens that were used to describe the new species. Researchers determined that the cat, dubbed, okay, are you guys ready? Machairodus lahaishapup, was closely related to the Smilodon, an ancient saber-toothed species that also once roamed North America. But it was much larger than the Smilodon, weighing up to 900 pounds, and was capable of routinely killing prey that weighed as much as 6,000 pounds. Throughout the study, the team discovered numerous other bones belonging to the species in collections throughout western North America, with the largest leg bone measuring 18 inches long. To give you an idea of how big this cat was, a modern adult male lion's humerus is around 13 inches long. While the identification of the species is a landmark discovery in terms of our understanding of prehistoric megafauna, scientists are still struggling to untangle the evolution of ancient saber-toothed cats and determine how they were related. Duck-billed dinosaur Scientists recently identified a new genus and species of hadrosaur, or duck-billed dinosaur, marking a step forward in their attempts to better understand this large family of herbivorous dinosaurs who roamed the Earth during the Cretaceous period. Discovered in 2004 on a small island off Japan's southern shore, the species was finally named this year in a new study. Paleontologist Yoshitsugu Kobayashi told Science Alert that it's one of only two late Cretaceous dinosaurs ever discovered in Japan, with the other being the Kamuyasaurus, which was identified in 2019 after being discovered on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. Before then, scientists had no idea what dinosaurs lived in Japan during that time. The Amatosaurus had a duck-billed snout with multiple rows of blunt teeth that it used for chewing plants. But unlike other hadrosaurs, its teeth were not easily expendable. Usually, hadrosaurus teeth fell out easily and were replaced with new teeth. Instead, the Amatosaurus had tough teeth that did not appear to fall out or grow back easily, indicating that it had a different diet from mainland hadrosaurs. The creature's skeletal structure was also different from other known species, falling somewhere in the transition between being a four-legged and two-legged walker. In evolutionary terms, this suggests that the Amatosaurus originated in Asia. Discoveries like this are helping to put together the migration patterns of hadrosaurs, who scientists previously believed migrated from North America to Asia. More specifically, the Amatosaurus upends this theory by suggesting that hadrosaurs, in fact, 
moved from Asia to North America. Dinosaur Age Mammal The Cerro Guido region of Chile and Patagonia is a hotbed of fossils belonging to dinosaurs and other prehistoric species from Antarctica and the Americas that migrated through the area millions of years ago. Earlier this year, scientists announced the discovery of a jaw with five teeth, representing a previously unknown mammal that lived in Cerro Guido between 72 and 74 million years ago, near the end of the Mesozoic era, and just a few million years before the dinosaurs went extinct. The specimen, named Orotherium tsen, is the second oldest known mammal ever found in Chile. It somewhat resembled a skunk. Based on its teeth, it was probably omnivorous, feeding on both plants and animals. Researchers believe it was related to other mammals found in Patagonia. This groundbreaking discovery is a potential game-changer when it comes to scientists' understanding of the evolution of animals during the age of the dinosaurs, according to paleontologist Alexander Vargas, who worked on the project. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! The Mosasaurus The Mosasaurus was a ferocious beast that lived in the ancient oceans of the world during the Cretaceous period, about 145 million years ago. As far as scientists are concerned, the Mosasaurus went extinct 65.5 million years ago. The big question is, could this prehistoric creature still exist somewhere in our ocean today? Most scientists say probably not. After all, some fishermen somewhere would have seen one. And what would it eat? But there are some who believe that there could still be a small group of Mosasaurs living deep in our oceans. After all, 80% of the sea floor has never been mapped, explored, or even seen by humans, meaning there could be plenty of strange beasts, perhaps even mosasaurs lurking about, or at least a handful of them. But just what exactly is a mosasaurus? While dinosaurs were ruling the land, the mosasaurus was busy ruling the seas. It had a long tail, short paddle flippers, and a massive head with very scary teeth. It used these attributes to its advantage, swimming majestically through the water and eating just about anything it wanted. And even though it might look like a dinosaur, it's actually a type of marine reptile, more closely related to a garter snake than a dinosaur. It was also about the size of a megalodon. Nobody has actually spotted a mosasaurus in modern times, though some claim the Loch Ness Monster is just a mosasaurus that got left behind and has been living in the Scottish Loch for hundreds of years. Other mysterious large beasts spotted in the water around the world are also rumored to perhaps be a mosasaurus. The Giant Ground Sloth Something very strange happened 8,500 years ago. Suddenly, almost without warning and pretty much overnight, all of the largest mammals in the world vanished and have yet to come back. The Irish Elk, the Woolly Mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger and the giant ground sloth, just to name a few. All these huge beasts that had ruled the planet for thousands and millions of years were just gone, as if they had never existed at all. But it took a little longer for some to die than for others. For example, the woolly mammoth survived a few more centuries by hiding out on remote islands, while the giant ground sloth is believed to have lived an additional 5,000 years by retreating deep into the Amazon rainforest. To this day, scientists have no idea why this mass extinction happened, but they say it definitely had something to do with the ending of the Ice Age and a dramatic change in climate. Today, one of these huge extinct creatures may still actually be alive, the giant ground sloth. Scientists know that ground sloths once lived with humans, since tribal Amazonians have passed down legends of the mysterious monster for generations. But even in modern times, People speak of a huge creature over seven feet tall, equipped with sharp claws, matted fur, and a deafening roar. The description matches the giant sloth exactly, which when alive would have actually looked nothing like the sloths we have today. These guys were around 13 feet tall and dug burrows with their enormous claws. Officially known as the Megatherium, to many people from the Amazon, it is the Mapinguari, a spooky creature that you can smell coming before you see it. It moved extremely slowly and managed to survive over 5 million years in South America, thanks to its size and intimidating techniques. The weird thing is that the creature has been spotted by multiple people in the Amazon jungle. Scientist David Oren says he is closer than ever to finding it. On various expeditions to the Amazon, 
several people reported seeing a creature more than six feet tall, weighing more than 400 pounds, with dark or reddish fur. David says that Indians, rubber tappers, and prospectors who live in the forest say the animal is shy, but can be fierce when confronted by people. It makes a strange, strong sound like jets flying extremely low and leaves behind claw-shaped footprints. We don't know for sure, but the giant ground sloth could still be alive, clinging to existence in the most remote parts of the rainforest. The Megalodon If the Megalodon really were alive today, you would probably never want to step foot in the ocean ever again. Considering the Megalodon could grow anywhere between 50 and 80 feet and was more dangerous than all the sharks in the ocean combined, it would make surfing or sailing pretty risky. But what if the Megalodon is still living in our oceans, just deep in the darkest part where nobody can see it? The ocean obviously isn't riddled with giant Megalodons, but there could be a small group of them surviving in isolation. Here's what scientists have to say. According to Robert Bosnecker with the College of Charleston in South Carolina, the Megalodon may have gone extinct because of a creature that still lives today. When the great white shark showed up on our planet about six million years ago, they lived only in the Pacific Ocean. But after two million years, they had spread across the entire globe. The little cousin of the Megalodon was taking over the world, and the Megalodon ended up starving because the smaller, more agile, and more evolved great white shark was stealing its food. In a way, the Megalodon lives on today through the great white shark. The only way one of these prehistoric monsters is still physically alive is if they've retreated to the bottom of the ocean, where they hunt for food in the darkness. But as you know, there is not much food down there, and a Megalodon would have to eat a lot. The Short-Faced Bear The giant short-faced bear was a prehistoric creature that roamed across North America until only a short time ago. Scientists say the huge bear had a face kind of like a bulldog and was very similar to other North American bears, but it died out 11,000 years ago. And while most mainstream scientists will agree that it's extinct, some believe it could still be roaming the vast wilderness in both North America and Russia. Some of the most convincing sightings actually came from Canada, where the giant short-faced bear has been spotted in the Northwest Territories, British Columbia, and even in Alberta. The bear is said to be so big that it can carry off a moose, though nobody has gotten a reliable picture of the creature. Then, in Russia, there have been sightings of what the locals call a caterpillar bear, far away in the Kamchatka Peninsula. A theory was even put forth by the Russian zoologist Nikolai K. Vereshchagin that the mysterious animal is the short-faced bear, perhaps migrated to Russia from the Bering land bridge between Siberia and North America over 10,000 years ago. Considering how remote the Siberian wasteland is, it wouldn't be that surprising to know a prehistoric bear is living somewhere out in the snow. The Plesiosaur A Japanese fishing boat may have accidentally discovered a dead prehistoric beast back in 1977. The creature in question is a plesiosaur, and it was found recently deceased and hauled up to the surface by the Japanese fishing trawler the Zuyo Maru. They had been trawling off the coast of New Zealand when they picked up the carcass at a depth of 1,000 feet. They couldn't believe their eyes when they brought the dead animal out of the water, dropped it onto the ship, and realized that they were staring at a monster. The creature was over 33 feet in length and weighed just about 4,000 pounds. None of the fishermen on board could identify the monstrosity, though some believed it was a rotting whale. Others thought it was a giant mythical turtle without a shell. In the end, profit came before curiosity, and the captain threw the rotten creature back into the sea. He didn't want the giant dead carcass spoiling the rest of the fish that they had already caught, and it was just too big. The only piece of evidence that this even happened is a photograph taken by one of the crew members before the carcass was thrown overboard. The fishermen showed the picture of the monster to company officials when they returned to Japan, and the story took off after that. Japanese scientists came forward to declare that the creature was definitely a plesiosaur, while other scientists denied it. There is no way to tell what the creature really was all these years later, but if it had been a plesiosaur, that would be kind of amazing, seeing as they went extinct over 80 million years ago. And now for number 5, but first want to give a big shout out to Fennet. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and for your service. To all of our subscribers, thanks so much for watching. And if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the Origins Explained family. 
We have lots of new videos coming up. The little dodo. The dodo bird is extinct and not coming back. There is absolutely no doubt that on the island of Mauritius, every last dodo bird is dead. After the Dutch showed up on the island in the year 1600, the dodo bird quickly fell and became the poster child for extinct animals. It took them less than 80 years to hunt the bird into extinction and beyond, along with their dogs, cats, and rats, which didn't help at all. But here's something a lot of people don't know. There is still a kind of dodo bird alive today. It's called the little dodo, and it lives on in the island of Samoa. But it's dangerously close to following its larger relative into the void of no return. The little dodo lives only in a small patch of forest with less than 200 birds remaining. The little dodo has become so rare that for the last decade, nobody even saw one. It wasn't until last December that a juvenile dodo bird was finally spotted sitting in a tree, giving hope that they might not be dead just yet. According to researcher Rebecca Sterneman, the little dodo is able to use its wings to fly, unlike the extinct dodo bird, which was flightless. But they still look kind of like fat pigeons. Plus, the fact that they can fly hasn't really done much to save them from the brink of extinction. The Congo Dinosaur There might just be a dinosaur living in the Congo. Yes, we've all accepted by now that the dinosaurs died out over 65 million years before today. But what if the great extinction missed just one or two of them? In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, sightings of a great monster known locally as the Mokele Mbebe could be proof of a lingering dinosaur that missed the memo about going extinct. The creature is said to be about 35 feet in length, has brownish skin, and it has a very long and flexible neck, just like an Apatosaurus. It also lives mostly in caves, though it has been sighted drinking at rivers and occasionally eating elephants and crocodiles. Unfortunately, nobody has managed to snap a photograph of the legendary Mokele Mbebe, putting it in the same category as the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. It's just a myth until somebody can prove it really exists. There's no hard evidence yet, despite countless expeditions to hunt down and kill the monster. In 1980 and 81, famous monster hunter Roy McCall even went deep into the Lake Tele region of the Congo in search of the beast but didn't find any evidence of its existence. He did, however, hear plenty of stories from the locals, who all claim to at one point or another have had an encounter with the mysterious dinosaur. Montana Direwolf Back in May 2018, an animal was shot dead on somebody's private property outside the town of Denton in Montana. The animal was unlike anything the local people had ever seen before. It almost looked like a hybrid wolf and a dog, or even a freakish werewolf. The animal was so bizarre that some believe it could be an actual dire wolf, a creature that hasn't been seen since the Ice Age. The dire wolf was an expert hunter that lived all across North America. They hunted bison, camels, and wild horses. But just around the end of the Ice Age, 13,000 years ago, the dire wolf vanished. Most scientists agree its extinction was caused by a wave of other extinctions, with all the animals it was eating as food just kind of vanishing overnight. But could the dire wolf really have survived all this time and made it to Montana of all places? Maybe, since the creature that was shot dead did look a lot like a prehistoric wolf. The only issue is that the creature was a bit small to be a dire wolf. Though, if the dire wolf has been in hiding for the last 10,000 years or more, maybe it's evolved to be smaller and better at hiding. The Titanoboa If the Titanoboa really is still alive today, we are all in big trouble. Millions of years ago, this was the largest snake anywhere on the planet and a literal nightmare. It could grow upwards of 40 feet long and was as thick as a doorway. Picture an anaconda except about three times larger and capable of eating a car instead of just an alligator. The Titanoboa is considered extinct with no exceptions, dead for 6.6 .6 million years. But just recently, theories have started circling that there could be a huge snake living in the Amazon jungle over 50 feet long. The theories aren't unfounded either, as residents living deep in the jungle have apparently witnessed a creature identical to the Titanoboa. The problem is that scientists can't prove or disprove that the massive killer snake still exists. The Amazon River is so big so long and so deep in places that it's impossible to locate anything if it's hiding in there, 
Even a monster like the Titanoboa could theoretically be hiding in the Amazon River without anyone ever finding it. The Great Woolly Mammoth The Great Woolly Mammoth, for some bizarre reason, seems to be the favorite of all the extinct prehistoric creatures. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below! There were claims coming out of Siberia in recent years that a small group of mammoths were caught living in the northern regions near the Arctic Circle. These sightings haven't been confirmed, but there is a slim possibility they are real. Mammoths could have continued living in small numbers in Siberia, maybe even without being noticed. But to tell you the truth, it doesn't really matter anymore. A company named Colossal is right now trying to put woolly mammoths back into the Siberian tundra. According to George Church, a biologist from Harvard Medical School says they aren't going to stop until woolly mammoths are alive again. His laboratory recently received $15 million in funding to carry out experiments to bring the mammoth back to life. George has been leading a small team of researchers for nearly a decade with this ultimate goal in mind. They will edit elephant DNA and add mammoth genes until they manage to produce a baby elephant that looks exactly like a woolly mammoth. Then they'll let them run around the Siberian tundra to see if they can repopulate. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Sherovipteryx. The Sherovipteryx is a bizarre prehistoric creature with leg wings. The strange animal had hind limbs literally built inside of its wings. It was a design that only appeared during the middle of the Triassic period and was never seen again. The Sherovipteryx was a reptile with elongated hind limbs much longer than its forelimbs, with a wing membrane stretched over them. Imagine if a bat had legs wrapped inside of its wing membrane, and then if that bat was a lizard. Only one specimen of the creature has ever been found, though its skeleton was so complete and so well preserved that scientists were able to confidently reconstruct its body. The creature was only about 10 inches long, with small teeth and scales. It glided from tree to tree more like a sugar glider or a flying lizard, though with even more accuracy. Researchers don't know why the adaptation died with this animal and never came back. After all, having its legs and wings fused together gave the animal a more efficient gliding system than any living glider of today. It lived primarily in what is now South Asia. Scientists say it probably evolved from a climbing animal that had powerful back legs and used to jump from tree to tree. Eventually, it grew the wing membrane to make jumping easier, but the animal never made it past the Triassic period, and so the evolutionary line died, and this specialized flying leg wing disappeared forever. Stagonolepis. The Stagonolepis was a large reptile with armored scales all across its body. It was kind of like an alligator or a crocodile, and it wandered around on all four legs. It used its heavy body armor to stay safe from hungry carnivores. What's really strange about the Stagonolepis is that it had a tiny head, only about 10 inches long. Considering the beast was at least 10 feet in length, its head only took up less than 10% of its body. It would have looked very strange wandering around with its bulky frame and tiny head. It also had no teeth in the front of its jaws. Instead, it had a beak that curved upwards, and it would have used this beak to dig for plants. The only teeth it had were in the very back of its mouth, which it could have used for chewing through tough vegetation, making it clear that it was an herbivore. It wasn't a very tall creature. In fact, it almost would have looked like a slightly taller crocodile with the tiny head of a weasel. It lived during the late Triassic between 228 and 199 million years ago. The Stagonolepis lived all over the world. Fossil remains have been discovered in both Scotland and South America, suggesting it did very well for a time over a very vast range. Quetzalcoatlus The Quetzalcoatlus was the largest flying animal that ever existed. It dominated the skies of America near the end of the age of the dinosaurs, flying above creatures you know and love like the Tyrannosaurus and the Triceratops. However, this was a serious monster. It was roughly the size of a giraffe but could fly. Imagine a giraffe with wings and a massive beak. It was a type of pterosaur, but it was the biggest ever. It was named after the Mesoamerican deity known as the Feathered Serpent and lived throughout a long period of between 144 and 66 million years ago. The Quetzalcoatlus had a large pointed skull, a hard crest at the back of its head, and a ridiculously long neck. It also had long legs and fairly short wings when compared to the rest of its body. For a long time, researchers thought the Quetzalcoatlus was much like a modern scavenger, flying through the skies and feasting on dinosaur carcasses wherever it could find them. However, 
Recent studies have shown that it was more of a modern stork and that it wandered around on land and picked up animals, swallowing them whole with its huge mouth. It may not have had teeth, but it could easily scoop up small dinosaurs and digest them once it forced them down its throat. As for how a huge animal like this could fly, it probably launched itself off the ground after taking several huge strides forward. This would have required massive power, suggesting very strong legs packed with muscles. Once in the air, the giant Quetzalcoatlus could probably fly for almost 10,000 miles without stopping. The Pachycetus The Pachycetus was the very first whale to ever live. It came into existence about 50 million years ago in what is today Pakistan but it didn't look much like a whale at all. In fact, the world's first whale walked on four legs and was covered in hair. It was about the size of a wolf and hunted as a carnivorous predator, eating fish and any other meat it could find. It also had very unique characteristics related to whales and dolphins. Scientific studies have shown that the Pachycetus had the distinctive skull shape of a whale. It also had an ear bone similar to what is found in modern whales, and an ankle bone found only in animals like hippos and cows. What basically happened here is that the mammal evolved backwards into the ocean. It's not exactly clear how the evolution happened step by step, but scientists do know that three major groups of marine mammals living today came from land animals. These include cetaceans, or whales and dolphins, and carnivora, which are seals sea lions and walruses, and sirenia, comprised of manatees and dugongs. The Pachycetus lived between 56 and 40 million years ago during the Cenozoic era, also known as one of the warmest eras in animal history. Back then, the global average temperature was 18 degrees warmer than it is today. In the tropical Tethys Sea between Asia and Europe, the Pachycetus slowly moved from the land and into the water and turned into a whale. Dimetrodon The Dimetrodon was a prehistoric reptile. Today, it's mysterious mistaken for a dinosaur probably more than any other prehistoric creature. But even though this thing looked like some kind of miniature dino monster, it wasn't actually a dinosaur. It began life and went extinct millions of years before dinosaurs ever evolved. It was a prehistoric reptile known as a pelicosaur, and technically was closer to being a mammal than a dinosaur. Weird, right? The Dimetrodon lived in the Permian period 50 million years before the first dinosaur came into being. It was a mammal-like reptile famous for the huge sail on its back that wouldn't make an appearance in nature again until the Spinosaurus showed up. To the untrained eye, the sail on its back might look like a giant fin, but it was actually a device used to regulate temperature by soaking up sunlight during the day and then shedding extra heat at night. Curiously, it was named by paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope after its two kinds of teeth and not the more obvious sail. It had sharp canines in the front and tougher teeth in the back that it could use to grind through muscle and bone. While impressive, it still wasn't much compared to the vicious mouths of the dinosaurs that came after. Procoptodon golia. This Pleistocene kangaroo was enormous and very extreme. In fact, it was the biggest, heaviest, and most impressive kangaroo known to science. It had an unusually flat face and eyes that looked directly forward. It also only had a single large toe on each of its feet. This is significantly less than the four toes that kangaroos usually have. On its hands, it had two long fingers with claws, which it used for grabbing branches and munching on leaves. The Procoptodon stood around nine feet tall, which means it would have loomed over all of us, making it much taller than any kangaroo alive today. It was the only kangaroo able to use its tail as a prop, kind of like a third leg, so it could stand up on it like a tripod, enabling it to reach way above its head to grab branches. This creature was pretty bulky too, and weighed about two and a half times as much as a modern red kangaroo. A kick or a punch from this kangaroo could definitely knock out a predator and probably break some bones. According to the Australian Museum, the giant kangaroo has been found everywhere in Australia except Tasmania. Other than its huge bulk and imposing height, it was pretty similar to other kangaroos. It was still a marsupial, giving birth to little babies who had to reach maturity inside their mother's pouch. What's really shocking is that the Procoptodon only went extinct about 15,000 years ago, during the last ice age. Hallucigenia fortis. In 1977, a British paleontologist by the name of Simon Conway Morris discovered a strange fossil. The fossil had actually been found 66 years earlier in the Canadian Rockies, classified as an annelid worm, and then stashed away. 
But when Simon looked at it, he realized the worm was quite different from anything already known to science. He realized that the organism walked on seven pairs of spines and was covered in tentacles. He called it hallucinogenia because it seemed like the kind of creature that could only come from someone's hallucination. The hallucinogenia lived 508 million years ago and probably resided deep underwater. Years later, in 1991, new specimens were discovered in China that proved some of Simon's theories wrong. First of all, it didn't actually have tentacles on its back. Instead, everyone was looking at it upside down. Those tentacles were actually its legs, and the spines they'd thought it walked on were actually spiky structures that stuck out of its back. The spikes were probably used for defense, kind of like a porcupine. With the new fossil specimens, researchers were also able to determine that this horrifying worm had huge eyes and a mouth filled with sharp teeth. Not only that, but paleontologist Martin Smith says the worm also had teeth inside its throat, which helped in digestion. Whatever it got in its mouth was never going to come out. While today we don't really have to worry about worms with sharp spines and horrible teeth, the parasitic worms around today are equally as terrifying. Giant Guinea Pig The Phoberomus patersoni was a giant guinea pig. At least it was a relative of the guinea pig, but just so happened to be enormous. It was a rodent that weighed 1,500 pounds and stood at an unbelievable four feet tall. You could ride that thing like a pony. According to Scientific American, this was the largest extinct rodent that ever lived. It wandered the Earth 8 million years ago through what is today Venezuela. A fossil of this horrifying rodent was found back in the year 2000, about 250 miles from Caracas. One of the researchers working with the fossil described it as a weird guinea pig over 9 feet long with continuously growing teeth. It would have been semi-aquatic, probably foraging for food along the riverbanks of the jungle, like a beaver or a capybara. It also would have looked more like a buffalo, even though the two are not even closely related, just because it was so big. As of right now, nobody knows why the giant rodent went extinct. It simply vanished, and all we have today when it comes to giant rodents is the capybara, which only weighs a pitiful 110 pounds. Imagine what life would have been like 8 million years ago with all these giant rodents running around. Although, there probably were way scarier creatures to be worried about back then. Terror birds Forest racids, also known as terror birds, got their name for a reason. These were huge carnivorous birds that couldn't fly, much like modern emus and ostriches. But these were even bigger, and as hard as it is to believe, even meaner. They lived primarily in South America during the Cenozoic era, from between 62 and 1.8 million years ago, and they reigned supreme. See, would you be more scared of a terror bird or a giant guinea pig? Let me know in the comments below. Terror birds were about 10 feet tall, which may not seem extraordinary, but just imagine looking up at a bird standing over twice your own height. That would be horrifying. These birds had a sharp beak, a powerful neck, and talons like what you find today on an eagle, only bigger. South America at the time was isolated with large predators living up north, so they had no real threats from animals like wolves or saber-toothed cats. The carnivorous birds could easily hunt the lumbering herbivores across the entire continent. They used their beak in a stabbing motion, or they might have just used their entire head to knock their prey out. It's also possible they may have used their sharp talons to kick and stomp on snakes and other reptiles to death. Some may have been ambush predators, while others may have chased their prey down. In any case, these birds were no joke. Once the land bridge formed between North and South America, all the animals were on the move. Over millions of years, the birds became smaller and had more predators. The last most recent bird was the Titanus, whose fossils were found in Florida. Nobody really knows why they got significantly smaller. Starting 1.8 million years ago, terror birds began to shrink in size until they finally disappeared. Just when all the other giant prehistoric monsters that lived across the Americas began to vanish, so too did the final, much smaller versions of the terror birds. A real dragon There have been reports coming in that in China, the very real fossil of a dragon has been put on display at a museum in the Gizu province. The reports have not been substantiated by any mainstream news outlets, though. According to the story in Weird Asia News, archaeologists discovered the remains of a dragon deep in a clay deposit. After removing the clay from the fossil, they found horns on the beast's head, and they found that it looked exactly like the dragons from Chinese mythology. The body measured around 21 feet in length, with the tail alone being 9 feet long. 
Its teeth were found to be curved and sharp, and apparently it lived about 200 million years before today. Experts claim the dragon was actually an amphibian that spent its time underwater, sometimes going on land when it wanted to lay eggs or hunt reptiles. Unfortunately for everyone, there are no real photographs of the entire fossil, so until there is more official news on the discovery, it's hard to know if the find is real or not. There are several fossils of dragon-like reptiles that lived before the dinosaurs, so it could be entirely plausible. There was the Garjaina, which walked on four legs and looked like a Komodo dragon. There is also a large number of dinosaurs that had horns and plates around their face. So we'll just have to wait and see if the find is real, and if they are able to identify the species. Or perhaps it is a new species entirely. Thanks for watching! Which crazy prehistoric creature is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!